Hi, welcome back. My name is Rekan. In this learning series, we are going through data sphere topics in detail. In today's session, we're going to focus on space concepts in data sphere. Spaces are isolated uh, objects in data sphere, and the data loads happen to the spaces, and the connections are also specific to the spaces. Data objects that are created inside a space, not accessible to the other spaces by default. If we wanted to uh, give the access in other spaces, we must explicitly share those objects in another space. So if you look at this diagram provided by SAP in help documentation, you can see several spaces created. The space design and the architecture of the spaces, number of spaces to be created and how the data has to be isolated and the systems need to be connected in those spaces, it, it varies. It varies from one organization to another, it depends on the project requirement and your landscape requirement. Uh, the design of spaces can be done. So there's no um, um, simple role to make a IT, uh, the space configuration for different business areas. So some organizations you can have IT space, central IT space where the connections happen, all the connections happen there. And then you can have different spaces for HR, sales, finance, to restrict the user's access to that the respect to spaces only. In this example, as I said, um, given by SAP Help, you can see HR sales uh, spaces created and users provided access. Uh, for now, I will not go into the role or privileges that are provided to these users. You can see this is modular access, uh, consumer access and view access and administration access, four different types of access. Um, shown in this diagram. We'll, we'll talk about the access privileges and roles um, in the next uh, session that is meant to be for administration, user administration. Uh, here, um, uh, we understand the space configuration, especially, and the design of spaces in, a, in an organization of data, data, data sphere architecture. And if we wanted to share the objects uh, from one space to another, so you can do that. So in this example, uh, in this diagram, you can see uh, sales views that are created in the spaces shared in another space and, and similarly in, in another space also. And then these views uh, can be used in an analytical model that is created inside uh, a new space that is um, that's that's uh, getting share uh, that that's uh, that is sh sharing the views from the other spaces. Uh, and once you have the new analytical models created, the person or the user who has access to this um, new analytical model can get the data uh, from the shared objects as well. So now uh, we're going to deep dive and look at. Uh, space creation, allocation of resources to the space and space monitoring in the data sphere system. Let's uh, get on to the data sphere tenant. So this is my um, free tier plan tenant. Um, it's um, good for 90 days. Uh, unlike your uh, free trial, there's a difference between trial and free tier. So trial has very limited access and um, functionalities provided. So you, your actions are very limited when you're working on uh, a trial version. Um, free tier is like a uh, almost very equal to standard plan. And then you get access to most of the features in data sphere. So uh, currently we are using free tier, free, free tier plan uh, makes you to get ready for standard plans. So you can even migrate all your work from free tier uh, to standard plan at any, any point. Uh, even if you are expiring your um, free tier plan in 90 days, you can still take a backup of your work and move on to another uh, free tier instance for another 90 days and then um, 
just that your data or the objects that you created in the previous tenant or previous uh, instance was uh, lost. So that's about a free tier. So I have uh, my free tier here and I got full uh, access in this system. Currently, you can see I, I logged in as a system owner, uh, but still I don't see all the modeling capabilities just because system owner by default uh, wouldn't have um, all the privileges required for data modeling and data integrations. So we're going to look at the the privileges part in the next uh, session as we as we discussed, but we will focus just on the spaces in this today's session. Um, in today's, um, so you, you can see the space management screen here. So there are, um, I've created one central space for now. Uh, I can create more number of spaces. There's no limitation. Um, uh, and then share the resources um, according to my requirement for that particular space. I'm going to create a new space. Uh, it is what we will focus on. And and then allocate the resources uh, like storage and uh, and memory to the uh, sorry, disk and storage memory to that particular space. So I can create uh, my space by project and also by business area. In this case, I'm going to create another one uh, for HR. So I can say my space name is HR, and then this uh, I wanted to keep this uh, space isolated from other uh, spaces so that the access is um, highly uh, restricted by default. So we, we are in this space creation page. Um, it's uh, okay, you can do the language. It's, it's not really, uh, you can say English. And then it, this is the storage criteria, enable space quota. So if you don't select this space quota, what it is going to do, there is no um, boundary to the space. And then um, and then the disk and memory usage could, could be wide open. And it can even go up to the entire or the maximum memory allocated for the data sphere tenant itself. So it is always good practice to have the space quota defined uh, based on your uh, projection or the, of the data footprint for the for the space so by default uh, this option is enabled and you can see the disk is 2 gb and the memory is 2 gb we we'll have to understand that this storage is not for processing uh, for running the queries or anything this is only strictly for storing the data. So you, we, we are going to need, we are saying that we're going to need one ZB of um, memory and two, G, two ZB of disk for storing the data physically in this um, space. So if you don't do that, it is it, it can go any, it can go more. Let's say you get into a scenario where you started with two GB of, one GB of memory Mm, um, and then to GB of disk. Uh, after a month time, you see that there is a overflow or the increased uh, demand for the memory, and then your data footprint is already one GB, and then your your, your um, space gets frozen. So that's when um, it's not going to impact any uh, big uh, problem to the tenant. It's, it's going to be frozen for the time that it doesn't have enough memory to pro uh, get the data. So once you come back here to the space management and then provide uh, or increase uh, the space quota for that space um, as required, and that will come back to the previous state or active state immediately. Um, so that is about uh, space storage. Let's say in another scenario where you um, don't um, have this um, space quota enabled, which means disabled, and then um, after a while you you come back and you wanted to configure enable space quota. Uh, at that particular time, let's say space is using five GB of memory. Uh, real data and then the 
allocation is going to be according to the um, the data that is occupied in that space. So this is going to get configured with uh, 5 GB of memory at the time. So we uh, it there are uh, all these uh, different nodes you must you must understand when you're configuring uh, configuring the space and managing the space uh, in the productive system. The priority, you can say one to high uh, workload management. This is a CPU processing thread allocations and et cetera, more for administrators. Uh, and similar to your HANA um, processing, your workloads are prioritized based on the space also. So if you keep high priority you, the, for this particular space, it gets always the preference when the CPU requiring or the, the threads requiring uh, or waiting uh, to allocate the resources. Um, similarly, uh, sim very similar to your HANA or HANA cloud workload processing. Um, you can um, change the workload configurations very similar to um, what we used to do um, in HANA for, for data sphere as well. So we, we can change the uh, we will come back to the workload management and workload configuration uh, once we go through the, the default or the uh, mandatory um, settings to be done for a space. So for now, we'll keep this as uh, as 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 default, and we'll come back and um, and, just, and try to make changes to the workload configuration after. So users. So you can, um, I will come to the user management later. Uh, currently I'm preparing the space without uh, giving access to any users. In the next session, when we understand uh, roles and scoped roles, um, then it will be easier for us to add users to the space. So for now, just not adding any uh, user here. Um, database users. So what is database? Um, uh, database access data consumption. Yeah, this option is um, disabled by default. You can enable so that every new uh, views created in that space are enabled or exposed uh, for consumption by default. If you wanted to override this behavior, you can still override inside that particular individual views um, by uh, switching on or switch off of the um, consumption option. Now I can say remove it. And then database users, the database users are HANA cloud users. Like uh, you have your underlying HANA cloud um, access. Um, so when we talk about users access, then we can look at the database users. So these users are not data sphere users. Um, currently, I have my, if you click on just create, you can see that uh, this is going to be database user name, prefix, and, and then schema privileges in it, and et cetera. This is more like HANA cloud terminology, uh, cloud access than than your uh, data sphere application ac access. Auditing and all this, yeah, you can see. So uh, that's about uh, different configurations for space creation. And then um, once you finish creating uh, the space, you can deploy it. So I'm going to say deploy it. As soon as the space is being deployed, it is ready to use and create objects inside it. So you can also see the monitor um, and then see um, what's happening, uh, how much consumption has been so far, um, and uh, more details. So this can help you to see the growth of the data footprint in that space. And then accordingly, you can plan for the additional storage and in in et cetera. You can always go back and do the edit space. Um, unless it is required, you don't have to do any anything. And then once you have the space, you start creating 
uh, objects inside the space, uh, starting with connections. So you connect, you create a connection um, in a particular space. General best practice is to create all the connections in one space and also don't repeat the connections in multiple uh, spaces. For example, if you configured an, a connection to S4 in IT space, make that unique. Uh, don't create another uh, connection in HR space from S4 system uh, for the, it, it duplicates and uh, data replication happens multiple times and it, it puts parallel processing on the source system. So to avoid all these problems, just keep one source system connection all the time in one space only, restrict it, um, just keep it separated for one space only. So that's, um, uh, let's go back to the content that what we have for this uh, session. Yeah, so we've seen space creation, allocation of resources to the space. Uh, we, we just um, allocated some uh, memory and uh, disk uh, storage and we, we've seen how to monitor the space. Uh, we'll see a little bit of uh, workload configurations and how they look like. Let's go back to the data sphere system. And then um, as we saw already that the workload management for a space is read-only. We can change this setting in the system configuration workload management area. So go there, configuration, workload management, and then you can see the spaces. For example, I wanted to give uh, more priority to IT central, increase it. Mm or actually change the configuration from default to custom. And then uh, you can say, you can increase the priority uh, here uh, to more. And then also see that total statement thread limit. Uh, you can increase the number of threads that are allocated for this, um, for this um, particular space. And it, this gets pre pre precedent automatically. Uh, it, be, uh, it has to be configured with a proper uh, statistics analyzed. Otherwise, uh, all the time it gets more preference and other um, spaces will be left. Um, no, no processing things. So go, uh, when we make the changes to the workload settings, workload configuration, be, make sure that you have all analyzed all the statistics about uh, required priority for that particular space. Not making any changes, I'm gonna cancel and then leave this as it is. So um, go back to the space management. So we can conclude that a space is created uh, and we have seen how to monitor the space and how to deploy the space and how to uh, delete the space here. And we don't really lock, it's just a temporary pause to that space, uh, really um, not using much. Uh, so you can either use all, uh, all these space management activities in the data sphere space management uh, tab. That's all for the space, spaces in data sphere. We'll see you in the next session uh, that talks about users, roles and management and, and et cetera. Thank you.